Okay, so these are the two cubic modules, the two halves in perspective with um, two-point perspective. So once again, you add this end out, which at first you were going to, you know, essentially copy, but now um, you don't need it so much because you are, rather you need it to still follow the dimensions and the spacing, but most of the things are already uh, started for you, okay? And this is the template that you have, which is at, uh, at uh, full scale. And there's two lines missing there, which should have been these two vanishing lines. Um, and very quickly, when we did this this morning, we forgot to, uh, or rather I didn't realize that this big dot would become really big when it was blown up. So what you can do to get a good mark, uh, guys, on the vanishing points, because these dots were from this drawing, because I wanted to make them really visible, uh, do this. Just get yourselves a piece of uh, white paper or tape and paste it over that dot and then redraw, redraw the cross here and there, okay, so that you can really go to that center there. Otherwise, that dot is so big that, you're, that your lines may not, you know, one line may go there, one line may go to the center, one line may go to the side. Okay, so just on the two vanishing points, not on this one. Oh, and on the station point as well. Okay. So this drawing shows you one face of one of these cubes, and that's actually the most challenging one because it's not touching the picture plane. Um, and it is at 11 by 17, right? So... So this is the way your drawing is looking right now, right? And your cubes are gonna be uh, approximately in this area. Uh, I'll get back to this in a second, but um, one thing you want to do is right away decide, and by the way, of course, this is your cube, right? You, you need to position, you know, decide which side you want to look at and say, okay, now that's, that's the front and that's the side, and, and make a little sketch for yourself. Again, I like to call it a little storyboard which is a little light now there. Um, a little storyboard that as you do the drawing, you know at all times where you are, okay? So what I did, I just drew this here, and that's my front and that's my side, okay? Because this is very helpful. You have two, two halves, right, side by side, but position the first and then the second one, just do one turn either way, one side, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise, and then you put it next to the other one, okay? In this fashion, so that they touch by about half, not by about, by exactly half, okay? So that's the first thing you need to establish because in your, in your drawing, that's how you would draw it. So essentially, these would be your two plan views of your cube, exactly the way you're positioning them, okay? So it's gonna have all these lines, uh, not sure how exactly your design is, but that's important. Okay. And let me just go through these pages. Um, now, if you went back to your little storyboard, um, again, you do one face at a time, and once you get your cube kind of outlined as a kind of a glass box, then you go to the faces, right? And you use diagonals for most of it because that's the beauty of diagonals that, you know, obey the same laws as, you know, grid lines. Um, and incidentally, all these diagonals would converge on the same vanishing point because each set of parallels uh, has its own vanishing point. Uh, once again, when we talk about doing a perspective drawing, we're talking about two planes, the picture plane and the ground plane, and they get combined um, into one single drawing sheet. So, for example, when we talk about projecting this line to the picture, rather, projecting this the, the point from from the object to the station point and it hits the picture plane and it drops down, hello, I've 
one person. <laughs> okay. Um, and then it drops down vertically. Essentially, what we're doing is we're doing this. Okay. We're we're projecting to the vanishing point, and then we're dropping down the line here. But in fact, in our drawing, it looks like this. This is the line. All right. Uh, and the last drawing, complex drawing in the set, is again trying to explain that, trying to visualize that. Um, you know, it gets complicated, so I don't want to get into too many details. But so this is what I did this morning. I'm going to redo this drawing now based on my template. Okay. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll go over the main uh, items again. Uh, so we have, of course, the plan view of the object, which for simplicity's sake, we position again at 30 and 60 degrees relative to the uh, picture plane. And of course, now you already have them in your template. Uh, and then we have the picture plane, and again, for ease of construction, we make the one box, the one cube in front touch that picture plane. So that that line is going to be a true line, even in the drawing. Um, then we position the horizon line just a little bit below that. And you can see that because the horizon line is above the object, uh, which is seen here inside the elevation, and this would be the ground line. So ground line, horizon line, uh, picture plane. Uh, because the horizon line is above the object, we'll be able to see the top of the objects. The, uh, the station point we picked um, a little bit arbitrarily. Okay, again, I didn't want to put it smack in the middle, uh, so I moved it to the right. And okay, so we have most of the elements now. So if you remember, you project a line from the station point to the picture plane from here to there that's parallel to one of the side of the objects, okay? So you can use you know, a variety of things, but you could also use your triangle like that. And you get that line. So where it hits the uh, picture plane, and I'm going to do both now. Those we're going to call A and B, okay? And A and B you're going to forget in a second, but for now you need them to then come down vertically to where they hit the uh, horizon line, and you get the left vanishing point and the right vanishing point. And what I'm going to do is put an arrow there because I myself get confused and want to go back to that point now, to the to A and B, and we don't want to do that, right? From now on, we only care about the vanishing points. Um, so the first thing you can do is draw the very first leading edge, which would be this one. So I drop this vertically. Okay, and because it's on the ground, that's my bottom part. And I can project this. I mean, I can also measure it, but I like projecting lines. It's fine. And that's my very first, my very first leading edge of this particular cube. Uh, now to find, let's do one at a time. So we'll do one and then two to find these two other spots. Remember how we did it? We project the point to the station point. I'm going to use the triangle now, so it's a little okay. One and. To, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but it'll be clear in the video. Yeah, you can kind of see it. So where it intersects the picture plane, you drop two verticals from there. Okay, do this, by the way, always using triangles, okay? That is, you use another straight edge at the bottom and you find your starting point and then you move your triangle this way. So you drop down these two points and now with the height of that 
uh, it's determined by the original line because now I can project my original line to the vanishing points. I'm going to do this with the triangle, it's a little bit otherwise hard. One and two. And where it intersects my other vertical line, that's my, the beginning of my cube now. Right? So I have that, I have this, and this. Now to find the back point, I could do the same thing, I could construct it, but now I don't have to because I can simply project the right point and the left to opposite opposite corners this way and that way and of course when they when they meet that's the back okay um, so once you have the first one you can also kind of show the the sort of transparency of it because it may be useful so let's do that let's draw I'm going a little off here sorry So because I have now the bottom uh, of this cube, I can draw two diagonals there, and that automatically would give me the, the center on the face, and I can then you know, draw, draw more lines and get the midpoints of these other faces. Right? And before I, go on, I continue with that, let me just quickly do the other, the other cube next to it. Let's, let's see. To get this very far corner, Again, project down where it meets, drops down. And here it's tricky because what is that? Um, we need to find first the other one, the other one edge that's in front, although that's not touching, so that's a little more complicated. But if I extend these lines, right, because I know that they're touching each other, and then I try to find this point like this, then I get that other spot right there. And once I have that, then I can go sideways. So I'm beginning to now see. Uh, you will notice that the one on the left is going to be a little distorted because the further you go to the side and the further you go off of a 60 degree angle, uh, the more distorted things will be, because that's kind of like our natural vision, a kind of vision that's about 60 degrees, of which probably like 40 is sharp and the rest is a little bit kind of out of focus. So don't get confused by that. Um, let's see, from the midpoint here where they touch, I can write, raise it, and now it's going to be a little hard to see there, but um, I can then connect this one. And from here, I can go there. Uh, it's not going to be as tight, the view, because remember, you're not really going to use the top of your cubes, because most of it will be in the lower part, right? Um, but it's good to have it. Okay, so that's the basic construction. I'm just going to uh, switch now to a uh, uh, enlarged view. And I had already started, so what I'll do is I'll do maybe the left face, okay? And basically show you that it doesn't matter that you, that you construct everything. Because again, with this um, uh, idea of the diagonals, you can find most of the information. So let's just see. Um, I should go back to my little, my little thumbnail just to have as a reference. So it's always good to have this as a kind of a reference. And just, you know, I don't know if I can show it all at the same time. So I did the, excuse me, the side. So the opposite side is going to be this one, right? Correct? Because that's the side I just did. So the opposite side is this one. And um, 
So I'll start here, which is this edge. Sorry, I have to put it out of the field of vision here, otherwise I don't have enough room. Um, let's, what I do though is I want to do a grid. So I have a square, right? So now I want to find my divisions there. Um, so again, a simple way is to find first your halves. So let's do that by dividing the bottom into half by doing diagonals, then by extending to the vanishing points. And now I'm just going to eyeball it, okay, because I'm too lazy to open the paper here. It's a little complicated. Um, oh, actually, I don't have to eyeball it because I already have it from my previous drawing right here. That's the middle. Okay, so right there, that gives me this point. So I can extend that, do more diagonals. And so forth and so on, okay? So the more I do, the more divisions I get. And I'm doing this really heavy now so you can see it. But of course, in your drawing, you would leave this very light because you don't want, you just want to, you know, get your, get your basic grid. So let's, let's go back to this. So I, I'm going, I'm moving in this direction, right? Away from my front. So I start this point right here, which would be here. It goes up diagonally one. So it goes up here. Then it goes down one, diagonally also. Then, then again, I guess, yes. Then again, and then finally it goes straight horizontally, okay? So that's how you determine it. And you do this sort of like, again, transparent house type of thing. Uh, earlier, I, sh I found the center by connecting opposite corners of the cube. Okay. So then once I do that, I would again just connect. And again, lightly without worrying too much about figuring out what is what. So right there, I've got half of it. Um, and I'm gonna stop, but I would do now the same with the front and the same for the back and then go back with tracing paper and try to figure out, you know, what is visible. I mean, you know, if I was trying to figure out this now, I probably know that this is visible, that's visible, that's visible, this is hidden. And let's see. Okay, so this would be, of course, if I since I'm not finished here, but um, that's how you do it. And trying it out just by hand is a great way to, you know, pretty much solve the problem before you could do your final. Okay, so if you want in your final, you can leave out, you know, you can leave the construction, but you don't have to. Um, that is, you can do an overlay for the final that it that looks clean. Uh, I am requesting that you include also your construction uh, sheet, just fold it in half in your file. And, um, and then again, just like the tutorial, we're going to, um, we're going to show the final two cubes and also the f uh, f floor plan, okay, the top view. And I think I'll leave it at that. So.